Hello, and the last of these videos is going to be about hitting the family jewels, aka the bollocks. Now, there are a number of techniques to doing this. There are a number of fallacies about doing this, but for, to do this and for you to see it clearly, I'm gonna point the camera down. Okay, so some of the first things of note. A lot of martial arts advocate the use of the knee to the bollocks, and so they should. And some have a more Muay Thai approach to it. Some have a more kind of close range World War II combatives range to it, but a lot of arts talk about kneeing to the groin. One of the first considerations I have is that the humans, a bit like the eyes, they're very good at protecting their bollocks. They tend to move out the way, turn their thigh, turn their knee, scoot back, scoot in. They're pretty good at not being hit in vulnerable areas. So avoid the notion that this is going to be easy. This is not an easy technique to pull off. It's a devastating technique. It's a simple technique, but simple does not equate to easy. So. One of the first things I look at is using knees from the early savate or defense dans la rue tradition. And they have the jeune en marche. And the jeune en marche, essentially the marching knees, as opposed to relying on one or two, it combatively moves the opponent by essentially moving a soldier's march forward up into the groin. Now, whether this hits the groin, the inside of the thigh, the inside of the knee, doesn't really matter because you're throwing them in multiples, often in about four or five knees. So again, as we get to this close range, as opposed to relying on one or two signature knees, we're moving forward. We're not just kneeing in abstract, I'm walking through that man. I've got to assume that that man does not exist and I'm marching through him. So the jeune en marche is all about marching through the man. And again, you'll be doing stuff up top to draw his attention, you'll be hitting him in the face, you'll be pulling him, you'll be pushing him, you'll be doing other things to keep his attention up high, then your jeune en marche, essentially marching through the man. Not thinking about the knee, the knees will be moving in the groin area, but we're marching through him. So we're creating that sense of, of drive and power, we're taking territory, and we're hedging our bets because we're hitting a lot more than once. So again, boom, if you can land it in one, like in the movies, perfect. Life isn't like the movies, sometimes you might need to try four or five times. The Marche Genome offers a relatively practical and familiar way to do that. So again, assuming you've got some type of, of grip or strike or gouge or attack up top, your Genome Marche, you march through the man. You move through the man, you keep taking his space. Often in a more Muay Thai tradition, you get kind of repeated strong blows, which are fine, but they typically don't move the opponent backwards because you're always resetting backwards or many people reset backwards. Same with the simple combative ones. Often they just come up once or twice, but they just drive up. In the Marche Genome, we're essentially treating it as if we are doing a soldier's march forward. So one, two, three, we're always driving forward. I'm taking that space, I'm providing dominance. So when I'm kneeing to the groin, or when I'm teaching knees to the groin, the marche genome is my preferred way to do it. One, because it hedges my bets at a groin shot. Two, it, it provides buckling motions that if it does hit the knee, inside, outside, top of the thigh, people move. So when they do get hit, then it offers another chance to slug them up top with something damaging. You know, even if I break that balance with that marche numb, even if none of them fully hit the groin, I'll have moved his upper torso and his head enough to open up another nasty shot. So again, something very, very horrible. There, marche genom, marching knees, applying pressure and essentially treating him like he doesn't exist. The second, nice and simple, so I won't spend much time on it, is the coup de pied direct. The coup de pied direct is a snapping kick to the groin. The old French manuals advise the toe, the toe going behind the testicle. So it's aiming for that degree of penetration. There's nothing too advanced about it. Often with the rear leg, right knee, chamber up, smash out. <laughs> nothing you need to really think of there, but I'd say the targeting of the old French systems is very specific. If you think the toes behind the balls, often you get the penetration and the damage that you're after. Sometimes you aim a bit too shallow. So again, it, it allows us to think penetratively using that toe-based kicking, using yep, the, the coup de pied de 
So aiming the point of the toe directly behind the testes provides you with the mental conditioning to really penetrate that shot in. Next one, nice and simple, is the Slavic cock shot. So a lot of Slavic punches, they tend to go thumb down. A lot of Russian systems, a lot of combat sambo, thumb down, thumb down on the shots where it's jabber across. Uh, Mike Tyson's favorite body shot, or one of his favorite body shots from the Customato system was the thumb down. So again, in the Slavic version, let's say the attack is coming from the side. So I'm side on, I drop the body weight, which means I drop the knees, I keep myself level. And as I'm doing that, I'm firing this shot. I'm not firing it like an upward hammer. I find that these typically lack huge amounts of power, especially from the side. We're dropping and we're smashing this out. We're in a jab or a cross form. Nice and simple. Drop the body weight, fire that in. Make sure at the last minute, I put some weight into driving it into the opponent. So whilst I'm coming down, that comes out. The last minute, I drive it in. Nice, nasty shot. And the last of these groin shot series, I call it the John Snow. So now your watch is over. We've all seen Game of Thrones. Boom! We've got that kind of shanking stab of John Snow. In this one, we're very, very close to the opponent. We're going to use the big knuckle here, and we're essentially going to whip our shoulder forward, our hip forward, and twist our foot towards the opponent, and this drives in. When you do this correctly, your shoulder should hit the opponent's chest as this makes contact. So don't make contact out here. I'm hitting the opponent with my body. My shoulder hits the opponent, and my fist hits the opponent. So from here, we're at a closer range. The shoulder hits him center of mass. The groin shot, the John Snow, hits him right in the cream crackers. One of the best ways to do this as well is to get some degree of attachment around the back. So if you can, you see here a bit like the chin jab. If I've got an attachment to his back, so it's the back of his jacket, his hoodie, just the side of his body. I prevent him from stepping back. I prevent him from taking some of the sting out of the blow by leaning back. Essentially, I crash straight into him. So you should be getting your shoulder strike into the solar plexus, the groin strike down here, and you prevent him moving away. So there's some of the ways in which we do groin strikes in the Bartitsu lab. Not the only way, but some of the more interesting ones. Um, my particular favorite is the Marche Genome. Give that a try. Try and knee in a slightly different way. It offers slightly different opportunities and advantages. Cheers.